Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. This is killer in my backyard and I enjoyed it, but for all the wrong reasons. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I'm Jay Harang and I talk about soft porn and stalker movies. You should subscribe. So first we see this house for sale and someone is clearly up in the loft. It's a foreclosure sale by the way and whoever this is hiding in the house decides to rip this photo in half. A couple has arrived to look at the house so the lurker has gone back up into the loft. This couple, where do I start? This is Alison and Eric. The underlying issues in this relationship are made pretty clear immediately and when the realtor asks if they're thinking of having kids, we'll see. Yeah, we... Ooh, that can't be good. Oh dear. So Eric asks Alison if she can afford the house, and she's like, yeah, I've sold my condo, and there's plenty left in the trust fund. I mean, if you want to make a character likeable, it's probably best to avoid giving her a trust fund. But believe me, she gets worse. Essentially, Alison wants to get married, but Eric's like, no, I don't have enough money to contribute, and I'd feel like a leech or whatever. Alison not only uses her wealth as leverage to force Eric into getting married. Maybe if we were married, you could have some say in all this ridiculous but she also constantly rubs the fact that it's her money in his face and we'll see a lot of that later Alison is horrified when she hears that the previous owner of the house died and the realtor for some reason starts reeling off details about the previous owner presumably because plot the owner passed away rather suddenly she died in the hospital her name was Marion Mitchell the lawyers looked for her next of kin but the banknote was overdue they forced a sale Eric thinks it's a bit creepy but Alison's like stop worrying Eric it's my money, not yours. Oh look, the house has this thing. I assumed it was a pool, but they refer to it later as the hot tub. It also has a guest house. Eric is like, this is just too much. And fair enough, really, because Alison is an unmarried woman whose fiancé won't set a date for the wedding and clearly doesn't want kids. <laughs> True. Anyway, the realtor suggests they rent out the guest house. Oh, that's a good idea. Then Alison throws in another dig at Eric. Are you serious? As serious as a marriage proposal? Oh, fuck off, Alison. You piece of shit. She's decided to make an offer. Eric's not so sure, but it's her money and she can do what she wants. As the realtor is locking up, this guy jumps out. He says he likes the house too. Unfortunately, I think it just went off the market. Okay, no realtor or estate agent ever says this. It's their job to sell the house for the highest price. And Alison and Eric have already indicated they'll be putting in a low offer. But anyway, Alison is buying it because plot. The realtor tells this guy, his name is Josh by the way, that the new owners might rent the guest house out. Two months later and they're moving in and unpacking pointlessly labelled boxes like this one. Alison says she needs to rent out the guest house ASAP. That rent money is really going to come in handy. There's a few things wrong with the house and Eric says they should have had an inspection done. Listen, when you buy your first home, you can inspect it all you want. Yeah, alright Alison, we get it, it's your house. Next day, Josh turns up at the door and says he wants to rent the guest house. Eric shows him around. Within seconds, Josh is asking Eric personal questions about his relationship and his career. So what do you do? I work for a music label. Sounds very exciting. So did you guys set a date yet? No. Why not? You're in love, right? I get it. Just waiting for that one big promotion that changes everything. Josh tells Eric that he runs a restaurant in Long Beach and that he's looking to open a new one in this area. So he's up here looking for property. Josh offers Eric six months rent in cash to have the guest house for three months. Eric obviously agrees, even though it's not his house and he hasn't told Alison, the owner. On the way out, they bump into Alison's younger sister, Tara, who makes it clear she's into Josh. Hello. What a slut. Tara invites him to Alison's birthday party on Saturday. So Alison has walked outside to find out that she has a new tenant and that he's invited to a birthday party. Oh, we're going to talk about this later. When Josh signs the agreement later, he notices an unregistered gun in Eric's desk drawer. You never know when you might need one of those. No, you don't. The first time Alison and Eric leave the house, Josh lets himself in. He steals a framed photo of Alison and plants bugs everywhere, which would be really easy to see. It's the birthday party now and in walks Eric's intern, Jamie. Alison sees them talking and is immediately insanely jealous. And this isn't helped by her sister pretending that Jamie is really hot. Come again? She's just not. And all they were doing is talking, but this has caused serious problems at this party. This is all very unfortunate. Josh has arrived and Tara is throwing herself at him. Then there's this awful happy birthday scene. Happy birthday to you. Right, one, one of the guests arrange themselves like a choir. 
And number two, someone is woefully out of tune. Happy birthday to you. I reckon it's Eric. No wonder he's not doing very well at work if he's a talent scout for a record label and he's tone deaf. I mean, what the fuck? But Alison is still furious about the conversation Eric was having with the intern. Eric convinces Alison that he's not cheating and that he only loves her. Look, I was made for you and you were made for me. You were made for me. As they make up, Alison sees Tara and Josh being somewhat over the top on the balcony. Next day at Eric's work, he's talking to Jamie the intern. This is Ron, Eric's boss. You'll see later that every time Eric is talking to the intern, Ron appears like magic. It's incredible. Josh is at home now, googling Eric, and sees his criminal record. Somebody's been a very bad boy. Next morning, Josh is playing loud music in the guest house, which wakes Eric and Alison up at 7.30 a.m. What? Eric goes round to tell him to turn it down. He does, but this doesn't stop Alison and Eric arguing about it. Josh can hear the entire thing, because he's bugged the house, remember? Yes, of course. I'm gonna get ready for work. Oh, so it's a work day. Why were they so annoyed at being woken up at 7.30? What time does Eric start? Perhaps he rocks up at 10 o'clock every morning. If so, he's probably not getting that promotion. Anyway, at work, Eric is talking to the intern and he's telling her about the problems he's having with Alison and Josh. Oh, hi, Ron. At home, Alison is in the hot tub and Josh walks in. Josh, what are you doing here? Me? Oh. Yes, you, Josh. He says the door was open and he was worried about her. And she's like, yeah, I'm fine. Just get out. So Eric is home and Alison tells him about the incident. They decide to ask Josh to leave. Josh can hear the conversation, of course, so he turns the music up again. They go on to tell him to turn it off, but he ignores them. So Eric cuts the power off. <laughs> See how you like that? Ooh. You're hard. But Josh has called the police. And when they arrive, they're like, hey, he's a tenant and he has rights. So turn the power back on. Understood. Alison and Eric start wondering, why is Josh never at work and think something is up? Eric goes to see his lawyer to see what can be done. The lawyer's like, yeah, just wait out the contract. You can't do anything. But at home, Josh is snooping around the house again and the realtor turns up. As nobody's there, she leaves a message on Alison's phone and is about to tell her that Josh is actually the previous owner's next of kin. Yes, of course. Now things are beginning to make sense. But he's in the house and he can't have that information getting out. <laughs> Eric is off to work and Alison's being a knob. Sometimes I wonder why we're even together. That came out of absolutely nowhere, by the way. She's such a twat. Anyway, Eric is off to a party at the office and for some reason, Josh is there. Eric doesn't notice Josh because he's wearing a hat. Oh, I see. He starts talking to Jamie the intern and tells her that Eric has a crush on her. On with this information, Jamie immediately throws herself at Eric. Josh takes photos of the incident and disappears. Then he goes home and sends the photos to Alison. Next day at Eric's office, Alison comes in and shows Eric the photos she's been sent. In front of everyone. They start arguing and Ron is just standing there listening. Now if something like this is happening, I'd at least go and hide, then listen in. Who just stands there like a spectator? Ron, apparently. Wow, that was, uh, something. Eric asks Ron if he can sleep on his couch. That's a no then. <laughs> when Alison gets home, Josh comes by with a bottle of wine to see if she's up for it. I know what you want. Unbelievable. Maybe another time then. Now, Josh is absolutely furious that Alison has rejected him like this. So what does he do? He throws four books onto the floor and takes some clothes off. Of course. Well, isn't that what most people do? But that's not help. He's still livid. So he throws another four books onto the floor and rips his shirt off. Oh, that's why. Yes. Eric has come home to pack his things, but Alison's like, yeah, I'm over it now. And they agree that Josh is the main problem to focus on at the moment. Eric always seems to be shouting, by the way. He's sleeping with my sister-in-law, for Christ's sake. Okay. Next day at work, Eric is talking to the intern. Oh, and there's Ron again. It's every time. He's talking to the intern. Hi, Ron. He's talking to the intern. Hi, Ron. He's talking to the intern. Hi, Ron. Ron tells Eric that he's had an email about Eric's criminal past. It turns out it was a 10-year-old assault on a minor, but it's still a felony. And the email has gone to everyone, even their clients, so Eric can forget about any promotion. What a revolting development. 
That night, Josh gets a visit from this guy, Tommy. Tommy thinks Josh is working on something and he wants in on it. He knows Josh's real name is Sam Mitchell. It seems Josh has done something awful to the boss at the last place he and Tommy worked together. So Tommy uses this as leverage to get a cut on whatever Josh has going on. I think the cops would be really interested in knowing where you are right about now. Okay, you know what? Here's what I need you to tell. I'm all ears. So Tommy just walks into the main house at night, looks at a book for some reason, and knocks some golf clubs over. Eric hears something downstairs, but Josh has come into the house and shot Tommy. I told you not to mess with me, Tommy. When Eric comes down, he sees that Josh has shot the intruder, and it looks like Josh is the hero when the police arrive. But it turns out that Josh used Eric's gun. And this is bad, because in California, it's okay to have an unregistered gun, unless the owner has any felonies. In which case, it's up to three years in prison. Eric, you don't have any felonies on your record, do you? You son of a bitch. <laughs> So Eric has now attacked Josh in front of the police, so he's arrested and Josh presses charges. Oh dear. But one of the police officers has a look into Tommy and she has some concerns. Tommy had a business card from a restaurant in Long Beach called Fiorenza, so she wonders why he'd come all that way to target their house. When Alison gets home, she calls Fiorenza's on a massive phone and asks to speak to the owner, Mr. Mason. Mr. Mason is dead. He was found murdered two weeks ago. My God, that's terrible. Yes, it's very sad. It turns out a load of cash was stolen too. Alison is told that there was a patient from a psychiatric hospital working there who left just after the murder. I see. His name was Sam Mitchell. Sam Mitchell? Yeah. Tara comes round to ask Alison why Josh has been ghosting her since the party. But Alison's like, don't worry about that. He's an escaped mental patient. Mental patient? So he's dangerous? Probably yes, considering he's almost certainly killed his former boss. Anyway, so Alison and Tara go over to the guest house. It's in a state, and Alison finds the picture of her there. She also finds the other half of the torn photo that proves he's related to the previous owner. Oh, and his ID card from the mental hospital is also just lying around. Really? Tara has gone to pick Eric up from the police station and Alison is in the house alone. Or is she? Oh, someone's coming down from the loft. Why they're not showing this, I have no idea. It's obviously Josh. Eric and Tara are back. Why are the lights off? Do you think something's wrong? Maybe. Tara sees the stairs to the loft are down, but Josh comes up behind her and chokes her out. Then he goes downstairs and somehow knocks Eric out with this punch. Whatever. Josh then tells Alison that this is his house and that he and Alison could have been happy living there together. You're crazy. Well, he has escaped from a mental hospital, so yeah, probably. Josh says, yeah, well, I'm the previous owner's grandson and I killed my parents. Oh, and I also killed the realtor, by the way. If you're wondering where Eric is, he's still out cold. That's absurd. Alison manages to escape the room and hide in the closet. What's that smell? <laughs> oh, it's Shelly the realtor. Josh opens the closet, but Alison's ready and waiting. <laughs> One more time. You're not the only one who knows the way around the kitchen. <laughs> so everyone else is alive. The lawyer and the police officer turn up and now everything is fine. Yeah, it's all hunky-dory. A week later, Eric and Alison have set a date for the wedding. Should we consider renting the guest house out again? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end. That is all. So until next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.